Welcome back to the F124 driver career here at Haas currently with two Grand Prix left to go before we make the move through the Ferrari family from the feeder team, so to speak, not that anyone actually has moved from Haas to Ferrari, from the customer team, it's perhaps the best way to phrase it, to the works team. We will be moving from Haas to Ferrari after the end of the season. However, there is still the opportunity for some good performances and hopefully some more points. I would love to get over 100 points in my debut season in Formula One. We're currently sat on 96, as you can see. I have a sprint weekend here in Qatar, so actually we have three opportunities to get the four points that we need to get ourselves into a decent position. We've got a great fifth place in Vegas last time out. Fortuitous again, perhaps, but we just felt quite strong, actually, at Las Vegas. Sprint weekend here in Qatar, so a shorter race, 19 laps, I think it was, and then the full 57-lap Grand Prix here in Qatar before, of course, the season finale in Abu Dhabi before we move to Italy from America. But... We're not going to waste any time, really. The World Championship is already decided. The Haas car at the moment is actually sitting quite nicely in a clump of cars that are there or thereabouts chasing Red Bull. Aston Martin and Red Bull on paper slightly ahead. In theory, we are ahead of Ferrari at present and level-ish. I think McLaren might be a smidge ahead as well in performance with uh, Mercedes-Benz. But in actuality... Still is the case, we are artificially boosted on that list because of our strong power unit, our aero and chassis department are still seventh uh, in the list. So we're probably where RB are at present. But Qatar is a, a track where certainly you need a good aero and chassis package, but definitely need a good powertrain as well. So hopefully the powertrain can help counteract our poorer aero and chassis package. With the right setup and a good, hopefully not terrible driving from me, we should be able to get ourselves some points this weekend. That is the aim, whether they come in the sprint or the four Grand Prix, I'm not sure, but thankfully we're in Qatar and there'll be no rain, so we stand a great chance. Do drop the video a like if you're enjoying the save, please. I very much appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed this first season so far. Do make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more of this save moving forward. Come and join me on stream and you'll see every single lap of every single session that we do. Links in the description to Twitch and to the live streaming YouTube channel, but without any further ado, let's head to the desert with our one practice session and try and get as many resource points as we can to, even though we're leaving, help set Haas up for a strong second season. It'll be great to be at Ferrari and be fighting for podiums with whoever replaces me at Haas. Only 150 resource points on this occasion because again, sprint sessions who weren't able to fully maximize our haul, but not a problem. The quality pace sim has always, always been a little bit off in Qatar. We were closer this year than we usually are in uh, previous years, at Qatar, you tend to be like two to three seconds off the time that it expects of you in quality. We're only half a second off on this particular occasion, and it put us P3 in the whole session, so I'm quite happy with uh, the pace of the car at the moment. We will have uh, some new parts fitted, or fresher parts fitted, as we head into sprint qualifying, which is where we shall head next, and hopefully we can have ourselves a good points-earning weekend. Uh, for Cambridge, Sparks' expectations would be mid-table mediocrity, please. Thank you very much. With regards to Chelsea, any sort of European qualification is a win at the minute with the state of the squad. And completely unknown now with Enzo in charge. Is League One is going to be really strong next year. Three big clubs coming down, and the sides coming up from the league below all have strong squads with decent financial backing. And we've been pushed down to P20. Yep. Need a good exit here. We were a couple of tenths up on P16. And it is P16 in SQ1. We were a couple of tenths up after the first sector. We were a couple of tenths up after the second sector. But as everyone else improved, 
Uh, we ended up not quite making it through to the next round. Kevin did a 23-1-0-1. I did a 23-1-5-6. So 55 milliseconds was the difference between 12th and 16. That's how close it was at the uh, midfield point. Quite clearly see then that from Pierre Gasly forward, there was a bit of a jump. But there's a lot of us there. Within half a tenth of each other. That's pretty remarkable, really. And Yuki within a tenth of Kevin as well. So all it takes is one slightly better apex, one slightly better uh, putting down of the power, going a couple of metres deeper and keeping it under control through a braking zone, and we'd have been into SQ2. Unfortunately, we are not through to SQ2. But pff, we miss out by two milliseconds. You can't quite see because I'm in the way, but I did a 123-156. Daniel Ricardo did a 123-154. And Esteban Ocon did a 123-152. And Albon a 123-147. So I was 9 milliseconds slower than 13th. There was less than 100th of a second splitting four drivers. Fine margins in Formula 1. Very, very fine margins. That's unbelievable. It's probably the closest qualifying session we've ever been a part of. Unfortunately, we're no longer part of it. <laughs> the sprint is just going to be a straightforward I'm not sure we're one medium set. Our last result, but just try your best to gain a few places at the start. I'll give it a go, mate. I'll give it a go. <laughs> we will put one and a half laps worth of extra fuel in and see what happens. 19 laps of a sprint lie in front of us. Qualifying was outrageously close, so we feel like we can be quite competitive here. Brilliant start by Yuki Tsunoda. I'm going to drift left to try and find some space on the outside. Breaking very early for turn one, and we'll hold it around the outside. Maybe make a position back again? Actually, we've not only made a position back, we've taken the other RB as well. Carlos Sainz evidently qualified rather low down in P13 now in his Ferrari. It's a, a seat we will be taking next year. We will be partnering Charles Leclerc, and who knows where Carlos Sainz will go. It might be a straight swap with him going to Haas. I doubt it. I don't actually know what driver transfers are like on this year's game. We haven't had any retirements confirmed in this save yet, so I don't know what sort of movement there will be in between seasons. It might just be, I go to Ferrari, Science goes to Haas. I hope that's not the case, but there is a possibility that it could be. Decent start for us here, though. P16, we qualified. P14, we're running right now. We could quite easily have qualified significantly higher than, uh, than P16 as well. I think we're... We've certainly got the pace to challenge for P11 and upwards. All right, let's focus now. Whether we've got the chance to to challenge for points in the race, the main race, I don't know. Certainly, I don't think we've got the pa the pace to challenge for a top eight finish for points here in the sprint. But we'll give it we'll give it a damn good DRS shot. I'm not sure how how much we'll earn back of ERS per lap here. So it's. We're going to have to manage that throughout the Grand Prix and the sprint race. This is more just a uh, a trial run for us so we can get our fuel load and, and race strategy spot on for the actual main Grand Prix. But ERS retainment does seem to be pretty decent at the moment with the engine braking level that we have set. So I'm pleased enough with the first lap. But I think if we manage our ERS well enough here to get enough of a build-up of a head of a run. Is he going to go defensive? He is. Late. Definitely jinked in the braking zone there. That was naughty from Esteban Ocon. I thought about getting quite rude on the uh, exit as a result. I'm actually going to try and just hang it around the outside of him here. And have the inside line for this next one. Slight corner cut there. All right. And we'll hold the racing line there. We're through past Esteban Ocon. I want to try and get back within a, a second of Carlos Sainz in front if we can, and hopefully Pierre Gasly and the Alpine will hold the Ferrari up slightly so we are able to close the gap, get back within DRS range. Because we're going to need that DRS to be able to defend down the straight. Hopefully we can extend a little bit on Esteban Ocon in the meantime as well. We're not actually closing that gap to quite within a second yet. I'll use a bit of ERS here if I can. I think they're, they're just running slightly less wing than me at the moment. Everyone else. 
but that should hopefully help with our tyre wear because we won't be sliding around so much. Yeah, out of DRS range of the car in front at the moment. Detection point is about here. Oh no, that's the detection point significantly further back than I thought it was. So Ocon will have DRS in us here. I'll use a bit of battery, but I won't use all of it, so I'll try and use it to defend a little bit later in the lap. But by using the ERS, even with uh, DRS, Esteban Ocon hasn't been able to get close. Carlos Sainz is now fighting with Pierre Gasly around turn one, and hopefully they will slow each other up a little bit here. But you saw the gap open from just over one second to about 1.7 seconds throughout the course of that main straight. It shows the power of DRS here and why not necessarily in this race, but certainly in the main Grand Prix, we're going to want to make sure we are very much within range of the cars in front. We have been able to do that here. You can see the giant gap that has opened up from Kevin Magnussen already to the front 10. The front 9, sorry. K-Mag currently running in 10th. Basically shows the gap in performance between those front teams and ourselves at Haas. But that's fine. That's where we expect to be right now, challenging for points rather than anything slightly higher up. And we are going to be within DRS range of Pierre Gasly here. And hopefully out of DRS range of Esteban Ocon behind, and that does look like it's going to be the case. So we should now actually be able to extend that gap behind and the quartet from K-Mag to myself, hopefully can start to disappear and build a bit of a gap between us and those behind as well now too. It does look like it's happening. Science is going to try and make his way back towards that front group, but I don't know whether he's going to have the pace to catch. He's certainly going to have the pace to get past Kevin Magnussen. This is good news for us, the fact that the Ferrari is so competitive, because that's going to be our car next year. Quite literally, that's exact car. We will be replacing Carlos Sainz at Ferrari for season two. So nice to see that at least at the end of this season, they are competitive. How well they've prepared and protected with the regulation changes for next season, we don't yet know. All we know is we've suitably protected Haas for next year. But you would anticipate that Ferrari will still have a competitive car in season two. We certainly hope they do. At the moment, I'd say we won't finish any lower than where we are right now. There aren't any points on offer for the positions just in front of us. But there's certainly a little bit of pride. Color Science is starting to gap us, so we're not actually able to, to go away with Carlos. If K-Mag and Gasly fight too hard, I might try and pick a pocket and move up to P11. I want to run into my teammate there. But I think Carlos has already dropped us. So if you had to ask me now, I'd say we will be finishing 11th, 12th or 13th, but it might well be quite a battle between the three of us for the next 13 laps or so. I don't want to lose too much time here battling with Pierre and Kevin to allow those behind to catch up. So if we're to get through, I'd rather do it sooner rather than later, rather than get held up with Kevin and Pierre battling and let those behind catch us. We are opening up. It's worth about seven tenths of a second down the straight, it seems, DRS at the moment. Which is a mighty big gap, especially if you get caught adrift. That could quite, quite quickly turn into a huge gap in the race. So we're going to have to be wary of that in the full Grand Prix at the minute. I don't really feel like the car has enough pace to be any higher than the P11 where Kevin currently is sat anyway. So I'm not that fussed about not being able to stick with Carlos Sainz. But you can see quite clearly by the minimap how big that gap is to the front few now. And actually, it's now probably Max Verstappen that's in the lead ahead of Fernando Alonso. So there is some changing of positions going on in the front. Both Williams currently lapping at the back. With ourselves in the Haas, both Hasses, squarely in the bloody middle. Here we go, we've got a corner better this time. I might try and do a double overtake here, actually. Get a good exit. As he didn't get. So maybe I could try and take Pierre and Kevin down this straight. We are closing on Pierre here by using all of our ERS. He'll go offensive. Kevin will go defensive. And I'll go around the outside of both of them. 
And that is a double move. Nearly, actually. <laughs> not fully a double move. Mm, still not a double move. Gonna have to use more ERS. Now it's a double move. Underbody. Okay. Something to be aware of. Taking a little bit of floor damage there. Maybe over a curb. Maybe Pierre makes some contact. I'm not sure. But there it is, as you can see now, about a five second gap from Carlos Sainz to Sergio Perez. And now I need to try maybe and extend the gap on Pierre and Kevin. Hopefully, if I save my battery for the rest of the lap, hopefully I'll be able to maintain position into turn one, which is good information to have. I'm evidently running quite heavy at the moment. We're going to be able to hold position here by using all of our ERS. They're going to go defensive. They're going to battle each other. And hopefully, we can pull away. Starting lap 10 of 19. Very happy with how the sprint race has gone so far. Tire wear is high. Wow, 21% on the front left already. It is going to be a multiple stop Grand Prix. We certainly like that corner. I'm better than they are around that one. But they're better than me around others. Not a great exit that time compared to the other two. We might be in trouble here. Managing your tires. Manage your tires. I'll manage them as best as I can. I'm going to use all of my battery though, and here comes Pierre Gasly. I anticipated being able to get away. Or at least maintain just above a second's gap. That has not come to pass. I thought maybe from lap. 9 or 10 onwards, there wouldn't really be much more action in the sprint. To be fair, he's challenged but not actually been able to pull the move off, so maybe there might not be that much action. It might be this one highlight with him trying and failing, and that might just repeat itself for the rest of the race, but if uh, Pierre does make it through, then obviously you will see it. If not, I'll see you at the end of the Grand Prix, or end of the sprint race, sorry, the end of lap 19. Oh, Kevin's retiring, there's a yellow flag, and he's okay, slowing up. Yeah. I don't know whether he's got a puncture or his engine has died, but the car is, I believe, now stopping on track. No, he's still going, is he? No, he's stopped. He's stopped. Kevin is out. Well, there was one more highlight to come before the end of the race, and that was my teammate retiring, sadly, which means he's probably going to take a penalty of some description for the main Grand Prix, because he'll be starting at the back, okay, which means he probably is race. unlikely to score points in that race as well as this race. Does actually free up Pierre Gasly now to push a little bit harder and only worry about what's in front of him rather than what's behind him. So I might end up coming under a little bit more pressure now in the final two laps. But hopefully we'll be able to deal with said pressure. Whoop! Says okay, as he nearly loses where? the car. The <laughs> Thanks for that, Mark. Perfectly timed as the back end stepped on me. You can see the tyre wear levels there. I am absolutely going to lose this position now to Pierre Gasly at the end of lap 17. And I'm not even going to fight it. I'm just going to let it happen and then get him back next lap and then try and stay ahead the lap after that. I still anticipate being able to finish in P11. But we're going to have to make sure we have a, a good solid lap 18 to be able to take him back at the beginning of 19 to hopefully then maintain the place to the end of 19. P11 in the... P11 in the sprint is decent, we'll take it, and hopefully going to challenge for some points in the full race. Time for actual qualifying. That felt like a good lap, you know. We might make it into Q3 here. Oh. Me and P11 are best friends, apparently. How close was I to getting through? Ah. Oh. We were about two tenths up on whoever was in P11. Oh, Kevin beats me by half a tenth. We were significantly up, and you can tell it, but actually from the times, you can't quite see again. Unfortunately, I'm in the way. Uh, I did a 122.254. Kevin did a 122.207. So we were 47 milliseconds slower than Kevin, but that means we did save a full set of brand new softs for the race. I was two and a half tenths faster than Esteban Ocon in P12. So there is absolutely some good pace in the car. Carlos Sainz is out. He did go on a second run and quite frankly, 
pooped the bed. Carlos Sainz is not performing in a Ferrari right now, and with our performances at this stage of the season, we are deserving of that Ferrari seat at the moment. Charles Leclerc, to be fair, only just got through as well. He was only what, less than a tenth faster than me. So the Ferrari actually genuinely isn't that good a car right now. We have to hope that they make significant improvements next season and in the off-season. Lando Norris two and a half tenths faster than anyone in that session, but we'll wait and see how Q3 ended up when we get to the Grand Prix and see what the, uh, the full grid is. Of course, uh, lots of drivers with grid penalties, as we saw from the end of uh, first, the first round of qualifying. So we might start slightly higher than P11. Let's go and find out, shall we? Like, Verstappen on pole. Alonso, Ooh, on Alonso on pole. He's having a strong end to the season. Verstappen was less than a tenth Moving behind him, however. 0.056. Norris. Norris and Norris and Perez. Stroll, Stroll and Russell. Russell. Stroll's getting dizzy Leclerc. up in P5. Wood. I start eighth. Science. Gasly. So many penalties. Sonoda. Hamilton, Hamilton with a penalty. Bottas. Ricardo. Piastri's going to be well behind Piastri. as well. Piastri with a penalty. Ocon. Albon, Albon and Ocon with penalties, Joe. and, and my Kevin teammate Madison with a penalty as well as Zhou Guan Yu. So Kevin, where, to be fair, we anticipated he was going to get a penalty from the retirement in the sprint. He made it to Q3 and retired. We start eight. Unbelievable, Jeff! We know we haven't got the pace to stay with them. Recommends it's a medium hard, a medium hard race, just a one stop. Uh, we're not going to need three laps worth of extra fuel. I'm confident enough that I can take out at least 1.25 laps worth of fuel from there. Uh, wow, okay. I'm going to see what happens with the... Actually, firstly, what's everyone else starting on? Mediums all round? Mediums all round. So pr you presume then that that is significantly a much faster... Uh, well, except from the personalised... It's about 10 seconds faster to do a one-stop than a two-stop. But I wonder... I wonder if... I put the softs at the end... and put the hards in the middle, whether we can actually make that a bit faster. No is the answer. All right. I think it's going to be a one-stop then, a one-stop race, unless uh, there's a safety car. It's not much in it, but there's enough in it that we'll probably avoid the use of the soft tyre. If the medium tyres are too worn, then we know we can come in in the early 20s rather than the mid-20s and be able to get ourselves a decent undercut, knowing that the A, the hards would probably last till the end of the race anyway, and that the mediums... Uh, so the softs are an option for us at the end of the race, but they will die quite quickly. All right, I'm happy with that. Mediums to hards, and then see what the hell happens. Rolling, rolling. 0.2 meters will do nicely. Make sure we get the edge on the surrounding drivers as the lights go out. Oh, you imagine that everyone is on a one stop here. That's the anticipation. Not a bad start. Quite a bit of wheel spin in the middle of that first phase, but tucked in on the inside here. Norris makes a, a move towards the inside. I'm gonna have the inside of this turn here. We know how quick the Ferrari can be, so I'm expecting to be challenged by Carlos Sainz very early on here. There you go, that wasn't really much of a challenge, was it, for Carlos to get through? We've talked to P9 already. We've got Lewis Hamilton right behind us, but after that, I feel like we're competitive enough with everybody else from Hamilton backwards, so. We're going to try our best to score one World Championship point here, if we can. I feel like we have the pace to score that if, strategically, we can get ourselves through this race the right way. There is definitely going to be the opportunity for one World Championship point here. And maybe, maybe more if there are some retirements or someone gets some damage or has a mechanical issue. Okay, the start was fine. We'll wait and see. Pleased enough with the start though. Qualified P8. No, actually, qualified P11. Started P8, more accurately. Running P9. But as long as we can stay within a second of Carlos Sainz 
and his teammate Charles Leclerc in front through this next lap. We should have DRS. We are just out, crucially out of DRS range of Lewis Hamilton behind, I believe. Over the detection point, I think he was 1.001 seconds behind us. And look at that gap grow back to Lewis now down the straight. If we can maintain that for laps to come, then we're in a fantastic position of a P9 or better on this particular race day. Sticking with the Ferrari is going to be relatively important to that, though. You can already see that Lewis has started to drop Pierre Gasly behind him. And the, the two Ferrari are actually getting dropped by the, uh, the six in front of them as well. So we're challenging with the team I'm going to be joining in two races time at present for enough world championship points to get me over the 100 mark in our debut season in Formula One, which would be very, very impressive. And we'd be very, very happy with it. Okay, so we've asked about Sainz in front. We've asked about Hamilton behind. And everyone seemingly is as, ex as expected, as anticipated, on a one-stop strategy. So we do have the tyres available to whack on a fresh set of softs and do a second stop if we would like to. If there's no safety car, obviously, and it becomes a strategy we could potentially use if there's a, a free stop behind or enough of a gap behind that we can justifiably stop for softs and make the positions back again. The minute Lewis is still with us and he might just be outside of DRS range of Pierre Gasly. We're comfortably keeping up with the Ferrari thus far though. And they're kind of keeping us in touch with the group in front. And you can tell by the gaps that yes, Hamilton is clear of Pierre Gasly's DRS range. So, right now if you had to ask me if there's no retirements from in front of us and no safety car i'd say yes we will get at least one world championship point but there's still a long way to go and anything can happen we're 11 percent wall on the front left there is a yellow flag already and that yellow flag is in front of us and that yellow flag is george russell no it's sergio perez Sergio Perez is retiring from the race. Well, there's a free position. Just as we mentioned, no potential retirements in front of us. Someone retires in front of us. Surely then now, with the pace we seemingly have in this Haas car right now, we have the opportunity to score multiple World Championship points. Said there's a long way to go. And there still is. But that's great news for us. And I was too busy concentrating on multiple other things and cut a couple of corners there. So apologies for that. We're still within DRS range of the cars in front. I am very, very vulnerable to Lewis Hamilton right now. Might be a case of trying to hang on to the two Ferrari and onto the back of Lewis as well. But the gap back to Pierre now in P10 is over three seconds already. I'm a happy boy right now. Having to drive my tits off to stay with the two Ferrari at the minute concentrating very hard, hence the lack of talking for the past couple of laps. But as Yuki and Gasly and co fight behind, the gap to P10 and back has just grown and grown and grown. It's now two seconds higher than it was at this point last lap. Nailed on points right now. Nailed on points. It's a, it's a question of how many will we get at the moment rather than will we or not. The answer is most likely yes, but will it be one, two, potentially six for a P6 finish maybe? We shall wait and see. Is it six in P6? One, two, four, six, could be eight. Eight, 10, 12, 15, 18, yeah, it could be eight points for a P6 finish. Clearly the front six, sorry, front five are significantly faster right now. The Ferrari is showing its weakness. We know the Ferrari isn't as strong as those front few cars in a number of areas. 
at the minute, Lewis Hamilton is probably getting very frustrated because he's definitely got the pace in the Mercedes, or rephrase, the Mercedes definitely has the pace that Lewis could extract for him to have stuck with that front group. But because he's stuck by me, and in turn, the two Ferrari, he's P9, not in the top seven, or top six even. Leclerc might have a look at Carlos here, he's not. But you'd say, actually, Carlos Sainz is probably holding Charles Leclerc up right now. Whether he's holding me up, I don't know. I don't think so. I think Carlos has got the pace on me. But Leclerc is faster. And Lewis is probably faster yet still than the two of them. Still very happy with how this race is going so far on lap 8 of 57. Piastri now starting to work his way forward though, you'll notice. So as the McLaren comes back through, he'll surely start to catch. That McLaren is a rocket ship in this save right now. Even though the gap is over six seconds, Oscar Piastri certainly will close on the four of us here if we're not able to get past Carlos Sainz and get away from him. So it may only be a one world championship point potentially in 10th with Oscar Piastri finishing ahead of the four of us that are currently here. It depends on pit strategy, it depends on fuel, it depends on how much the tyres wear in this first phase. But the minute fuel I'm absolutely happy with. Tyre wear is high as expected, very high. Whether I think we're going to be switching to a two-stop, to be honest. I don't think these medium tyres are going to get me all the way to lap 22 with any real pace. So we will probably look to undercut and stop about lap... Well, no, it's actually... what 27 was what it wanted from me in this stint, wasn't it? 22 was the two-stop. Huh. They are going to be significantly dead by the time we get to lap 22. This is going to be a case of whacking softs on with about 10 laps to go and hoping they last and are very quick. I remember on F123 in our driver career we did when we were at Aston Martin after our first season at Sauber. We might even actually have been in the first season at Sauber. Uh, we ended up winning the Qatari Grand Prix by overturning a massive deficit by doing an extra stop and stopping for a soft set of tyres. We closed down like a 20 second gap on Max Verstappen in the last few laps. I don't anticipate that happening here for minor points places, let alone a win. But we should hopefully have a decent enough gap to P11, hopefully by the time we get there, that we could set a set of softs on to maybe take a fastest lap point at the end of the race. That could genuinely be an option for us. Wait and see how it transpires, but at the minute, still very comfortably sat and holding position between the two Ferrari. What we could do with is Oscar actually getting away from that group that he's in front of, so he doesn't bring them with him to us. But the gap to Oscar is closing and will close yet further still between now and the first round of pit stops. I'm going to have to box, okay, well, Leclerc rephrase, I know I'm Leclerc in front of me, I'm not going to get past him though, but I don't anticipate even really being able to get these mediums to lap 22. When they get these mediums to lap 27, those on the one stop, going to be almost puncture territory by then, surely, very nearly, front left tyre will be almost puncture territory by lap 27. It's not a very good strategy, I don't think, somehow apparently it's still faster than a two stop though even with a brand new set of softs available, which those that got through to Q3 won't have as an option. So they've got no choice really but to uh, but to one stop. We have got the option to two stop, but it's still not as quick on paper. But I bet with worn tires, there will be more mistakes made and we will be able to overturn that deficit. Perhaps, we'll wait and see. Piastri really needs to gap that because at the minute, the gaps drops from seven seconds to six seconds and he's still bringing everyone behind him with him. On Sal here. I'm gonna go for it. On the inside into the final turn. We pass Charles Leclerc. It's me past one Ferrari, but 
We're going to have to use a lot of battery here to make sure we don't fall behind that Ferrari again. Massive closing speed on Carlos Sainz, but we're now up into P7. Oscar Piastri is bringing a few cars with him, but he's not massively closing. It still was only just under six seconds after a handful more laps. What is happening, actually, is George Russell has lost the front few. I don't yet know if Russell's falling back towards us or if he's just being uh, dropped by the front few and the gap is maintaining itself between Sainz and he, but we can see him down the road at certain points on the track. And I'm going to try my best. I think I'm sure we should be able to get Carlos Sainz next lap with DRS and ERS. And maybe we could be up to P6 before we then try the undercut. I'm pretty sure right now that we are going to switch to the two-stop strategy. But we'll keep an eye on tyre wear as we progress through this first stint. But let's be honest. Surely the tyres are going to be so worn. This point is at 40% front left already. I want me to do another 11 laps on this set. 40% already. Crazy. Right, seven tenths the gap to, Carl, to um, Carlos Sainz. And we guesstimated it was about a seven tenth gain down the pit straight with DRS. He's then drifted into me there. Kind of similar to Pierre Gasly in the sprint race, only this time I haven't picked up damage, thankfully. Not able to get the job done on Carlos Sainz, but we know then that as so long as we're within seven tenths of him, as it was almost to the millisecond as we came onto the start finish straight, as long as we've got the battery to do so, we can challenge Carlos for the position. We'll try again this lap if we can save the battery and be closer. We'll try and get ourselves P6 again. Back up to George is growing still slightly, so the Mercedes is faster than the Ferrari. Definitely closer to Carlos this lap. This should be relatively straightforwardly. P6 for us. We were seven tenths and nearly got the job done. We are more than 50% closer than we were that time. We've in fact gotten it done before we even get to the braking zone for turn one. That is us into P6. But we're just gonna end up dragging everyone else along. Same way that Carlos Sainz has been dragging everyone else along most recently. I'm not gonna be able to pull away from the Ferrari at all. Hopefully I can maintain the gap. Oscar Piastri has now broken the gap to the RB behind him. So I'd still be confident of a top 10 finish. Maybe even a top nine finish at the moment. It depends on fuel, tire wear and strategy continually. But as we're now basically the sprint equivalent's worth of distance into this Grand Prix, so we'll be a third of the way into the race, couldn't be happier with how it's gone so far. And that gap to George Russell has come down from five seconds to 4.4. I'm not gonna jinx anything. I shall just give you that look. Over the past couple of laps, the gap to Science Behind has just broken DRS. So Science with no DRS right now, and actually the gap behind Science is nearly a second as well. So we're elongating it out a little while. The gap to George is coming down down the straight because I'm able to save my battery throughout the rest of the lap. And whilst we maintain ourselves in a strong now P6 position, with the gap to George coming down and the gap to the Ferraris behind growing, I don't see the point at the minute with tyre wear not yet in puncture range. I don't see the point at the moment in switching from the one stop. What I will actually do... Okay, gap to the car in front. Yeah, I know. What I think I might actually do is stick to the one stop, but undercut. So rather than stop 27, I might stop 25 and we will try and undercut George if possible, if possible. 
at least close the gap to George if we can. Take some time out of him. If not undercut him for position, then undercut him for time. A bit of grip loss in the tyres around now, so just be careful. When we did the race strategy program, uh, Carlos is back within TRS range of me now. When we were doing the race strategy program, it said that our tyre wear was about 8% better per stint than expected. Meaning, at this stage of a stint, we should be a couple of percent, maybe a little bit more, better on each tyre than the other drivers around us. But, this is where, at this level of tyre wear, I start to make mistakes and nullify that advantage that I have on tyre wear. The gap to George actually didn't come down at all that last lap, I don't think. And the gap behind is back under a second again. So, Carlos Sainz is continually closing on me. And there's... Oh, I'm going to box 25, I think. I could box now. But I'm not sure about the hard tyres. Well, they should last. They should last to the end. I might box this lap. Now that Carlos is back within a second of me, I should probably just make, make use of some extra time. To box okay, this lap because if he has if he has DRS advantage on me for more than one lap then he's just getting further down the road isn't he whereas if I dip now he'll only get one lap's worth of DRS off me and actually oh it just dipped again it very nearly went over a second again there we almost got him out of DRS range then he wouldn't have had it at all gap to George is 3.4 currently I'm gonna burn some battery to get into the box here slam the anchors on and we are boxing for, at the moment, the first and only time. Right, let's go, come on. That was now a fantastic need... stop, faster than we were expecting. Now we need to make as much time as possible on these fresh hard tires and not get held up either. Look I'm going to come out. Now. We want to finish the race on this compound. I'm come out with my teammate here, who crucially I'm going to be ahead of as we come out of the box. So I'm not going to be stuck behind Kevin Magnussen for a lap, trying to get past or waiting to get past with DRS down the straight. With these fresh tyres, I can just go and we'll judge based on what happens with the gap to the cars in front on whether we think we are or are not going to earn okay, enough to time to catch to George Russell. Power. Obviously the gap to them is going to come down faster than it would do the gap to the Mercedes. But having clean air in front and not getting stuck behind Kevin Magnussen is hopefully going to help us close that gap to George, overdo that gap to George and come out in P5 after the pit stops. But we will be running on a worse tyre than everyone else around us once the pit stops are completed. This is where we also will look to lean on that extra seven or eight percent's worth of better tire wear to hopefully get us to the end of the race. Now the, the objective is drain ERS to under 25%. Whilst we're trying to gain a, an advantage, I might as well do that now. The gap in front has come down by a second. So it's probably come down to George by, oh, mate, great I don't know, hit that target. That six tenths maybe? For the rest of this race. But six tenths a lap over the course of three laps would half the deficit to George Russell. So I'm, I'm confident enough right now that we're very much going to be comfortable in P6 by the time we come out, or by the time they come out of their uh, first stop. It's just a case of, have we taken more than 3.4 seconds out of George Russell or have we not by the time they come in at the end of the next lap as it stands we do have a brand new fresh set of softs to go to should we need them at any point which I will set as my next set of tyres not a used set of mediums which will be the mediums I see they might be the mediums we used in a sprint rather than the mediums we just took off in the uh, in this full race okay, scenario Annoyingly, there's no way to tell. I have, I have asked the uh, the devs if they can add in something that just says kind of used 
bracket, 10 laps, for example, not because there'll be different percentages on each on each tire, but if you know how many laps that set's done, then you can make a, an educated guess as to how well worn that set will be. At the moment, we can't do that. So we'll set it to softs. We know the softs will be pretty dead after about five or six laps, but they should still be quicker than really worn hards at the very end of this stint. So if there's the opportunity for a free pit stop or a pit stop where we think we can guarantee getting the time back and taking a fastest lap point, then we will utilize that at the end of the race. But that's gonna be a decision made around about lap 50 or so, not one we can make at this stage. Right now, it's just about pedal to the metal, cut the gap to George Russell, and at the end of this lap, the majority will box, and hopefully we can gain time on enough to give us the chance of maybe a top five finish in this Grand Prix. George Russell continues on. Now that's very intriguing. They are prioritizing Lewis Hamilton in traffic over George Russell. I'd say then we will either definitely be past George Russell or we'll get DRS here off Esteban Ocon, which will be a very, very, very welcome addition to our race time or will be within DRS range of George Russell by the time he comes out the pits. We're now significantly past Leclerc and Hamilton. The gap to them is gonna be much higher than the two seconds it was pre-pit stop. Okay, so it's now over five seconds. Second. So using that information, we can say that with this extra lap and the DRS we just got down the pit straight, we probably are going to come out right with George. He'll either come out just in front of us the same way that Kevin did in front, uh, we did, sorry, in front of Kevin, or he'll come out just behind us and we can try and hold the position. You can see my tire wear there. So still only 1% on the right hand side, but 4% front left. And that's obviously the key tire, but that's going, we boxed on what, 25? So we're going, at, about one and a half percent maybe a lap on the front left 30 laps to go that's another 45 percent would be about about 50 percent on the front left by the end of the race which is less than we were on the medium set at the end of the last stint so we could still genuinely do a two stop sorry a one stop and make great time george is in the box now and again crucially We've closed to within a second of Daniel Ricciardo, so we'll get another helping of DRS here too. I'd say we will come out ahead of George Russell. Fastest lap of the race on the hard tyres. There's the Aston Martin Alain Stroll. There is George Russell. That is a net P5 for us right now in this Grand Prix. And we've got a decent gap behind us too. We are on for a top five finish here in Qatar. And Norris with the fastest lap of the race. I then take it back again, thank you very much. So 25 flat. Gap behind 3.7, gap in front 2.1. It may be a very lonely stint from here to the end of the race. Although, now that he's out of DRS range of anyone in front of him, uh, I think we might be able to catch Lance Stroll. Pretty sure that uh, Fernando Alonso will Gappus, because he's with the McLaren of Lando Norris and the uh, Red Bull of Max Verstappen. But I think Stroll might be catchable. We might be on for a top four finish here, perhaps, by the end of the race. Now, the, the gap to George Russell hasn't grown by that much the past few laps. But this gap to Lance Stroll has rather evidently come down quite a bit. We are going to take P4 off Lance Stroll here. The gap to Lando and Alonso is also closing, but only because they're fighting. Alonso took Lando. So Fernando's just taken the fastest lap of the race off me. Alonso took Lando, but Lando's now fighting back. We were only able to close the gap because they were fighting. I don't know if whether Fernando is able to 
continually hold the position as he's lost it again now. Whether Fernando will be able to pull away from Lando, they're still fighting side by side, or whether them fighting is going to let Max disappear down the road for an easy victory, which seems to be already happening. And you've seen the drop in the gap already since we overtook Lance Stroll, because they were side by side for basically the whole of the first sector. We might have a podium on our hands here in Qatar in our penultimate Grand Prix as a Haas driver. Long live this Ferrari powertrain, that's all I can say. Because with the chassis and aero competitiveness that we do and or don't have, it's this Ferrari engine okay, keep an eye on that, that is keeping us in seconds. continual points and or more positions at this stage of the season. Half a second now between Lando and Fernando. I think if he can break DRS, Alonso might just gap Norris. But I don't know whether he's going to have enough in the, in the locker to actually gap him out of DRS range. So hopefully they continue to fight, although the gap is still three tenths of a second into turn one. So Fernando has been able to maintain the gap this time around and may be able to pull away on lap 34. I'm bringing Stroll with me at the moment, but a podium might be in our future here. But don't get carried away if it doesn't happen. Because those two cars in front are very quick and on raw pace, if they don't fight, they'll both pull away from me. Still fighting hard in front. Norris and Alonso side by side again this lap through the majority of the first sector and the gaps tumbled. Every time they don't fight, they pull away by about half a second. Every time they do fight, they come back towards us by just over half a second. Meaning, if they keep fighting, I'll keep closing. Bring me a podium. I'm bringing Lance with me and the gap to George is still four and a half-ish. So it's not like we're lightning fast right now. Everyone else is about equidistant to us behind. They're still hanging on. But there is a possibility of a podium still on lap 35 or 57 with a long way to go and a 15% already worn front tyre after nine laps. We're thinking about maybe a podium. Gap between Alonso and Norris, three and a half tenths as we start the pit straight. And I feel myself yep. feeling like a bit of a school child That's wanting to start chanting, fight, fight. Fight, fight, fight. But Alonso was, just as we did on Science earlier in the race, already ahead before the breaking point. So they're not fighting side by side around turn one. We're not really able to close the gap. Still about 1.1 seconds just outside of DRS range to whichever car it is that happens to be in P3 at any given moment. Still trying to drop Stroll hanging on like his life depends on it. The gap to George Russell has grown from 4.4 to 4.7. For the moment we start fighting and joining this battle in front, if we can get there, that gap will come down as well. We do not have the luxury at the moment of having any sort of gap that would be worth stopping for that set of soft tires at the moment. DRS range on Lando. Just over the detection point, it was about 0.9 seconds. Fernando Alonso sets another fastest lap of the race. And he's, he's pulling a bigger and bigger yet still gap over Lando at the minute. But he might be saving battery now. Might have used all of his battery, Lando Norris. He might be saving battery to try and close the gap. We've dropped Stroll. And with that DRS now, we've started to gap George Russell behind as well. All right. Now we're becoming more and more confident of maybe a top four, guaranteed. Okay, mate. Yikes. But now the question is, can we get a podium? Is it possible for us to get a podium here in Qatar? 
or is our tyre wear going to be just a little bit too high having stopped a couple of laps earlier than everybody else? We're not quite going to be able to make it work. Time will tell. Still 20 laps to go, including the one that we're on. Oh, problem. huge! Alonso's just developed a mechanical problem. Fernando's going to be slow. Guaranteed podium, anyone? It depends how quickly they fix that mechanical problem. But Fernando Alonso is supposedly going to be struggling okay, you're catching the car in the not too distant remember, future. That's massive. How slow is that mechanical fault going to make him? Is it just no DRS? If it is, then he's still going to be very quick at almost every part of the track. If it's more than DRS, then he's going to lose loads of pace around the whole circuit, which is quite evidently what's happening. He's dropped seven tenths behind Lando already. And we should be able to take Fernando Alonso and put ourselves up onto the podium. Whilst it's not a retirement to help us get to position, Aston Martin's unreliability is still going to gift us a free position. And he's not going to have DRS on Lando either. Lando is going to disappear. We're not going to be able to keep up with Lando Norris here. He's going to be gone now. We are going to get Fernando Alonso. And then I think that's probably as far as I'm going to get. Don't think I'm going to be able to catch Lando. Unless we earn enough down this straight with DRS and ERS. We can significantly enough close the gap on the McLaren. Which I doubt, but we shall give it a go. Fernando went defensive there. It was a late move, but I got it done. Brilliant. Nice move. Keep going. Tell you what, we've gained to about a second on Lando with that DRS. But can I maintain that gap and get it down a little bit more by the end of this lap? I don't know. Only four seconds to max. Don't even think about it. I think that might be DRS on, Lor on Norris again. Just around the penultimate corner, I think we might have just closed the gap. We did indeed. P2 is on. P2 is on. That Fastest lap of the race. Of the race. Keep this up. Well done. We have great pace right now. Yellow flag. Oh my goodness, Max Verstappen spun! Max Verstappen bends it at the hairpin. We're into P2, and P1 is right in front of us. What has just happened to Max Verstappen? He's tumbling now. Oh, we might be about to win! He's just dropped it. He's just dropped it on the apex. Then reversed out of the way. And is having to wait for other traffic to come through before he can get going again. Uh, we might be about to win the Qatari Grand Prix if we can get past Lando Norris in the next 10 laps. Game on! At 105 difficulty, the highest we finished is third at Spa. Here, we might be able to get ourselves a win at 105. In Qatar, we shall do our absolute best. Oh, I bottled that. Now I'm out of DRS range of Lando. I might have just thrown it away the same way Max Verstappen did. If you don't mind, I'm going to shut up and drive my heart out. Max down to P6 right now. No, 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 no! With a win there! With a win there! Gearbox has failed! No! With 10 laps to go and a win in our sights, the gearbox died! That might be the most gutting component failure we have ever had in any career mode race ever. I can't recall one.
that is broken hearts much harder than that. Sockmas in chat says absolute cinema and he's and not wrong. It's all go, go, go I can't believe it. What did I say on the way into this as well? So I said something about durability. I said we've had one failure all season. I jinxed myself because there's a second. The gearbox gave up. We wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. Lance Stroll finished up, second. Piastri finished third. Formula One. Alonso fourth. Verstappen fifth. Sainz sixth. Unbelievable. I can't believe. There was a win right there and I'm going to get no points. I wanted to end the season with over 100 with over 100 points. Oh, George on the podium. George, Lance Stroll second, George third, Alonso fourth. Sorry, my mistake. Oh, I can't believe it. I wanted to end the season with over 100 points. I was about to get 25, at least 18. Oh, mate. That's killed me. Absolutely killed me. I'm gutted. That was our second win of our career waiting to be earned. I think the video still deserves a like, but that is absolutely a kick in the nuts. Not worse than a kick in the nuts, but I'd say probably on par, Jamie, to be completely honest. Unbelievable. Yeah, sorry's not good enough, I'm afraid. Sorry's not good enough. It was a gearbox. He said we lost fourth, but I still, oh, I still had more. Oh, God damn it, Leroy. Well, there is the opportunity to still get over 100 points this season, but it's a track that I'm not very good at. Oh God, I'm so gutted. I'm so gutted. Science with a P6, Charles Leclerc with a P9 only. We're deserving of that Ferrari seat right now, but our third DNF of the season, our second component failure of the season, and that is the hardest one to take that I can recall. Abu Dhabi for the season finale will come to you as the next episode here on YouTube. Of course, no rain as anticipated in the desert. Do drop the video a like if you're enjoying the save. Do it just out of sympathy for me right now, if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on our season finale and, of course, our potential Ferrari title challenge for season two, if the car's any good. At the moment, the Haas is supposedly better than the Ferrari, although durability-wise, that is now in question. I'm gutted. I'm absolutely gutted. I'll see you in the next one.